हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज अनिरुद्ध सिंह राठौर एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग वन शॉट सीरीज इन दिस वन शॉट सीरीज एंड टुडेज टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टाइप्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड इलास्टिक कॉन्स्टेंट्स ओके सो द टॉपिक्स टोटल टॉपिक्स विल बी फोर सो विल बी डिस्कसिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड दिस क्लासिफिकेशन विल बी बेस्ड ऑन द स्ट्रेस स्ट्रीन कर्व सो देर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ स्ट्रेस स्ट्रीन कर्व फॉर डिफरेंट मटेरियल्स सो विल डिस्कस दैट ऑल दोज टाइप्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स देन वी विल सी द टाइप्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर बिहेवियर सो इन द रियल वर्ल्ड हाउ द मटेरियल्स बिहेव and what is the composition of the materials okay depending on that we will discuss the types of materials and then we will discuss what is hooke's law and then we will discuss elastic constants okay so let's proceed so uh, first of all we are going to discuss types of materials as indicated by their stress strain curve okay so different materials are having different types of stress strain curves so we will be having different types of materials actually so if i how we get the stress strain curve so if i take a material and apply some loading on this and while applying the loading i am plotting the stress strain curve of the material okay so this type of stress strain curves are idealized okay in general the these stress strain curves will not be exactly what i am drawing the stress strain curves will be slightly different but the idealization of stress strain curve will be seen okay so just for an example let us say if we are having a stress strain curve like this okay never we will get exactly like this okay after this line we will get something like this also we'll get something like this also okay but we are not considering that okay uh, we are just idealizing it okay so now if i am getting this type of material this type of behavior okay so if any material is applied suppose tension loading i have applied and stress strain curve i have drawn and it is coming like this so what i will say that which type of material is this So this is linear elastic material okay linear elastic material okay so here is the proportional limit here is the elastic limit here is the here is everything okay so this point is everything so elastic range is up so up also up to here only linear elastic material right okay so that means stress is directly proportional to strain in the linear elastic material and in linear elastic material also we have seen that uh, area of this triangle will give the modulus of resilience and that modulus of resilience will be equal to sigma square upon 2e right okay so this is linear elastic material then next type of stress strain curve we will get if we are getting something like this okay so let us say this is the elastic limit b okay but this is non linear okay so this type of material is called as non linear elastic non linear elastic non linear elastic material okay so elastic limit will be up to here but it will be non linear okay so if we load the material up to this point and after this point we remove and up to this point if we remove the load the material will regain its original dimensions right Okay, so this is non-linear elastic material, and then after that, let us say the stress-strain curve is something like this. Stress-strain curve is something like this. Okay, so this is perfectly plastic material, perfectly plastic material or rigid plastic material. Perfectly plastic material or rigid plastic. rigid plastic why we call it as rigid plastic because up to this point it is showing just rigid behavior okay so when i am applying load on the material the stresses are increasing stresses are increasing 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 but there is no strain zero strain okay so in this portion it is showing rigid behavior just like a perfectly rigid material there is no strain at all no deformations only the load is ex exceeding and load is exceeding but still the material is not deforming but after a certain level of stress has reached the material will take no further stress at that constant stress the material will start deforming and the strain will keep on increasing like this okay so this portion is showing the plastic behavior so what do we mean by plastic behavior that means if i have reached up to this point what will happen the material will deform as long as the stress is acting and when i remove the stress it will not regain its original dimensions okay it will keep on yielding and yielding but if even if i remove the load the whatever the deformations have come they will remain just like clay suppose you have made 
a cube of clay okay you have mixed the clay very well okay and then you have made the cube of clay or let us say cylinder of clay now if you apply load on that okay when load is very small it will not deform at all you can slowly increase the load but there will be no deformation at certain stress it will start deforming and it will continue to deform at the constant stress and if you remove the load what will happen the deformations that have occurred will remain okay it will not recover right so this type of material is called as perfectly plastic material or rigid plastic material right okay so next type of stress strain curve next type of stress strain curve next behavior is something like that something like this if we are having material behavior like this will be here like this so this this material behavior is called as elastoplastic in this region in this region it is showing perfectly elastic behavior perfectly elastic behavior or linear elastic behavior okay and in this region it is showing plastic behavior perfectly plastic behavior or rigid plastic behavior so it is elastic as well as plastic so this type of behavior will be called as elastic plastic elastic plastic or elastoplastic or elastoplastic behavior okay so this is elastic plastic i hope these four are clear this is linear elastic non linear elastic this is perfectly plastic or rigid plastic and this is elastic plastic or elastoplastic right okay next let's move on to the next one so after this elastoplastic uh, let us discuss next type of behavior is something like this this is also elastoplastic but here what is happening this region is perfectly elastic behavior okay and this is plastic range we have entered into the plastic range in this but plastic range in this plastic range it is such a type of plastic range that that the deformations are not having at a constant stress we have to keep increasing the stress in order to increase the deformation okay so this portion is called as strain hardening in mild steel also we have seen that after this region this region this region is called as strain hardening region okay so this is elastoplastic but it is elastoplastic with strain hardening okay so this will be called as elastoplastic elastoplastic with strain hardening elastoplastic with strain hardening right okay next let us see next type of behavior this behavior is called as ideal rigid behavior okay rigid or ideal rigid we can call simply called as rigid or we can call it as ideal rigid so what is the definition of rigid material if we apply forces if we apply stresses the stresses will keep on increasing but it will not deform okay there will be zero deformation so here also we are seeing that if we keep on increasing the stresses load is increasing so stresses are also increasing but with the increase of stress there is zero increase in strain okay it will not deform at all so this type of behavior is called as rigid behavior or ideal rigid behavior so practically this type of material does not exist it is just a theoretical concept okay similarly there is another theoretical concept like this one here this type of behavior is called as ideal fluid ideal fluid okay so if you apply any force on the fluid but what what will it will do that fluid will deform start deforming okay so it will offer no resistance at all it is almost like at zero stress or zero uh, zero shear stress it will just keep on deforming or it will keep on flowing okay so ideal fluid has zero viscosity zero surface tension okay so it will just keep on thing like this okay that will be the property of ideal fluid so ideal fluid behavior is just like this okay and next type of curve is something like this now you will say sir this is just like non linear elastic okay non linear elastic but here this is i have shown just the loading curve okay there will be unloading curve also so when i unload the material it will follow this type of path okay so loading path is different from unloading path loading path is something like this when i have applied the load the stress and strain it they are increasing like this 
okay but unloading path is like this this is the unloading path unloading path is like this okay so when i am loading i am providing some amount of energy okay strain energy i am providing okay so as a stress is increasing strain is also increasing and whatever strain energy that i have provided that strain energy will be given by the area under this region area under this region so this will be the total strain energy that i have provided okay so this is the strain energy that i have provided but when i am unloading it it is following this path it is following this path so strain energy recovered strain energy recovered back is different okay so this is the strain energy recovered okay so this is the strain energy recovered now if i take the difference that means this much this this portion is the loss of strain energy okay so what this is representing this is representing the loss of strain energy so how much is the loss of strain energy loss of strain energy is while loading and unloading in loading once and unloading once this is the loss of strain energy in every cycle okay so in first cycle if i if i load it okay it will it will follow this path then unloading path will be this so this much strain energy is lost in this process okay again if i in next cycle if i deform it if i applied the load okay the loading path will be this this will be the loading curve so total strain energy will be total strain energy provided will be area under this curve and when i unload the strain energy recovered will be less okay so in each cycle each loading and unloading cycle i will be getting this much loss of strain energy okay this much loss so strain energy is lost in each and every stress cycle okay so this is called as hysteresis loop this is called as hysteresis loop hysteresis loop okay and this is called as viscoelastic material okay viscoelastic material visco elastic material okay it it possesses viscous properties as well as elastic properties okay so in viscosity is energy will be less uh, energy will be lost okay but it is also elastic so it will recover okay recover so this is viscoelastic material so these are the eight type of behavior eight type of stress strain curve behavior okay so they might be asked in your objective examinations right okay let's move on to the next type next classification so here also we are seeing types of material but according to their behavior okay according to force behavior or mechanical behavior okay so when we apply the force then how we how they will behave okay so first type of material is isotropic material now what do we mean by isotropic isotropic means having same properties in all the directions okay so if i have a material just a minute let us say if i am having this material okay now if i apply loading in this direction loading in this direction and i observe young's modulus so young's modulus is coming out to be 2 into 10 to the power 5 let us say if i am applying load in this direction i calculate the young's modulus okay again it is coming 2 into 10 to the power 5 if i am applying loading in this direction again i am getting young's modulus 2 into 10 to the power 5 okay so that means this type of material has same elastic constants in all the direction same elastic same young's modulus or same other properties load deformation characteristics are same in all the directions so if all the properties of the material are same along all the directions then that type of material is called as isotropic material okay that type of material is called as isotropic material now suppose i have another material so this material i am applying load here testing the young's modulus young's modulus i am getting 2 into 10 to the power 5 when i am applying load in this direction i am getting 1.9 into 10 to the power 5 when i am applying in this direction i am getting 2.6 into 10 to the power 5 so in each and every direction i am getting different values of young's modulus or load deformation characteristics are different so along all the directions the load deformation characteristics are different the uh, elastic properties are different so that type of material is called as non isotropic material or anisotropic material okay so here first we are discussing isotropic material what happens in isotropic material the elastic properties or all the types of properties are same in all the directions okay So isotropic material here. So it is the in this type of material. In this type of material, the 
the properties are same the properties are same in all the directions okay so properties are same in all the directions very easy concept nothing uh, very difficult okay what are the examples of these types of materials example are metals all the metals okay metals example steel steel or metals alloys okay these are these are isotropic material so isotropic materials are clear right next uh, see this this is the steel okay so if i apply loading in this direction loading in this direction okay same load deflection characteristics we will get okay if i apply loading in this direction same load deflection characteristics we will get okay if i test young's modulus in this direction so in this direction also we will get same young's modulus in this direction also same young's modulus in this direction also same young's modulus so everywhere along the along all the directions i will get same value of Young's modulus or Poisson's ratio or bulk modulus or shear modulus, all the elastic constants will be same along all the directions, right? Okay, so these are isotropic materials. Let's move on to the next one, non-isotropic or anisotropic material. So as I have discussed earlier, they are just the opposite of isotropic material. Okay, isotropic material will have same properties along all the directions. Non-isotropic materials will have different material properties along all the direction, right? So non isotropic materials these types of materials these type of materials will have different properties different properties along all the direction of the direction okay for example crystals so crystals will have different properties okay if i take any crystal they are obtained from rocks minerals okay so crystal is there okay uh, they are like diamond crystal or some uh, jewelry uh, made of those crystals okay so if i apply force in this direction maybe in this direction they seem to be very strong but if i uh, if i apply st strength in other direction okay if i apply load in any other direction it might happen that they will break very easily okay so these are these types of material properties where when they are changing with the direction they are direction dependent then these types of materials are called as non isotropic or anisotropic material okay so for example crystals are like this okay so along one plane they can be cut very easily along other plane they can be cut uh, with very difficulty okay so the properties are different along different directions right then there are orthotropic material orthotropic materials are also example of isotropic anisotropic materials only that means non isotropic material only but here there is little difference the difference is that they are their properties are changing at the 90 degree planes okay they are formation is along the layers okay just like layered rocks or example wood wood okay so wood you know that they are having these annular rings like of structure okay so if i apply loading on wood okay i have cut this part of wood and i am load applying loading in this direction okay then these different layers can be separated easily it will show very less strength okay but when i am loading it in longitudinal direction longitudinal direction in that direction they will be showing very high strength okay so in this direction the strength is less and in this direction the strength is very high okay so the properties are changing dramatically at 90 degree okay so when the properties are changing at 90 degree at perpendicular directions the properties are different then these are called as orthotropic material ortho itself means that perpendicular ortho means perpendicular okay so properties are changing at 90 degree angle right so write down in these materials in 
these materials properties differ at 90 degree angle okay for example plate plate is also a layered rock layered rocks um example wood etc okay so we can see this example so th here we are having circular annular rings okay and if i load this wood in this direction in this direction it will be showing very high strength but if i load this wood along this perpendicular to the grains like this okay they these grains can be separated very easily and it will be showing very less strength okay and these are the slate layered rocks okay so these are cut like this only okay when we cut like this they will be broken very easily okay but when we cut it cut them like this then we can gain large uh, pieces of this rock if we cut like this then very they will be broken down very easily okay so properties are differing at remarkably at 90 degree angles okay so these are the orthotropic material right so three types of materials we have seen let's move on to the next one that is homogeneous material so homogeneous material are such that when all the ingredients okay or when the material is such that throughout the volume of the material the properties are same for example if i have any material like this okay if i see here the composition is same the properties are same if i see here the composition is same properties are same if i see here okay or anywhere any smallest part if i observe the composition will be same okay properties are also same composition is same okay so that type of material is called as homogeneous material now what is what will be non homogeneous material if i observe here let us say young's modulus is very high okay if i observe here young's modulus is less okay here the composition of property composition of materials it is different here composition of material is different okay here i am having high compressive strength low tensile strength here i am having high compressive strength high tensile strength so properties are varying along throughout the volume okay some place i am getting different property other place i am getting different property okay it is because that composition of material is different when composition of material will be different then the properties will be different about the volume okay so homogeneous material means the properties are are same throughout the volume and non homogeneous means properties are different throughout the volume okay so non homogeneous and homogeneous so homogeneous materials when properties when the composition of material when the composition of material is same throughout the volume throughout the volume and and hence the material properties are same the material properties are same same throughout the volume then the material is called as then the material is called as homogeneous material homogeneous okay when so opposite of that will be non homogeneous material so what will be non homogeneous material properties will be different throughout the volume okay so non homogeneous material will be non homogeneous material properties are different properties are different throughout the volume different about the volume okay so these are the 
homogeneous material non homogeneous material okay so what all types of materials we have seen we have seen isotropic material that means properties are same in all the directions along all the directions okay non homogeneous uh, sorry non isotropic material means properties are different along all the directions okay then comes the orthotropic material so properties will differ at 90 degree okay so they will be having parallel planes 90 degree parallel planes they will be having okay that type of material are called as non homogeneous material sorry orthotropic material okay those types of materials will be called as orthotropic material and next one is homogeneous material homogeneous material means that properties are same throughout the volume of the material okay so everywhere you will see same composition then it will be homogeneous material and non homogeneous material means composition will be different for example if i see this rcc okay reinforced cement concrete now if i observe at this location i will be having only concrete there is no steel okay if i look at this location okay there is only steel no concrete if i take this part i will be having uh, steel plus concrete as well okay so if i am checking out this part the strength in compression will be very high strength in compression will be high but strength in tension will be very low okay if i look at this location at this location what will happen strength in compression is also very high strength in uh, tension is also very high here i will be getting some mixed thing okay so this side this is what an rcc beam column or uh, any rcc structure we will treat it as non homogeneous okay so along throughout the volume throughout the cross section we will be seeing different properties right okay another example if i take water and i put some sugar in that okay so composition will be different at different locations here the sweetness is less okay here sugar is less here sugar is more water is less okay so at different locations at different locations i am getting different properties okay so this is what heterogeneous mix or non homogeneous okay non homogeneous are also called as heterogeneous hetero genius or non homogeneous okay then if i stir it well okay that entire sugar is mixed completely so in this part there is no possibility if i mechanically apply some force and dislodge or make water and sugar apart each other okay i cannot separate by mechanical method if however large amount of force i apply i will not be able to separate sugar from water okay so from mechanical method i will not be able to separate them okay here mechanically i can separate them very easily right okay so this has become homogeneous mix okay so in everywhere everywhere i see at every location at every part i will be seeing same composition percentage of water and percentage of sugar okay that will be same throughout the volume this is homogeneous mix is homogeneous okay if i talk about material so steel will be homogeneous copper will be homogeneous all the alloys all the metals will be homogeneous right okay rcc will be non homogeneous or heterogeneous okay this is also no or hetero right now let's uh, cover hooke's law okay what is hooke's law hooke's law is very basic law that within proportional limit stress is directly proportional to strain okay so hooke's law says within proportional limit within proportional limit stress is directly proportional to strain stress is directly proportional to strain okay within proportional limit stress is directly proportional to strain is it anything new that we didn't know is it anything like that that no one can understand or it is is it is it not obvious is it not obvious what is the meaning of proportional limit proportional limit in itself means that stress is directly proportional to strain okay suppose i have a material like this okay this is the proportional limit okay here is the straight line portion and here curved portion is there curved portion is there okay so this is the proportional limit this is the proportional limit let us say a okay 
so if this is the proportional limit does that not by default by the definition of proportional limit it means that stress is directly proportional to strain within this region okay so what is new in this hooks within proportional limit stress is directly proportional to strain huh that we already know stress is directly proportional to strain within proportional limit proportional limit meaning is that that says stress is directly proportional to strain so he became famous by this okay without giving anything new he is became becoming famous okay this is called as i don't know what what this is called as it is just like he must be have been very good engineering student in engineering we used to do this thing only okay what is this uh, from the world itself we make the definition right so anyways so hooks law states within proportional limit stress is directly proportional to strain okay so this is now law hooks law so stress is directly proportional to strain okay now to remove the sign of proportionality we have to introduce some constant so stress will be equal to some constant of proportionality into strain and this constant of proportionality is called as you very well know this is constant of proportionality constant of proportionality and this is young's modulus or modulus of elasticity young's modulus or modulus of elasticity right okay so stress is equal to young's modulus into strain okay very good now young's modulus what does this young's modulus represent it represents the slope of stress strain curve okay in the initial portion of stress strain curve the slope of stress strain curve is called as young's modulus okay so this theta slope this this represents young's modulus okay so if i calculate tan theta tan theta what it will be tan theta will be equal to perpendicular upon base so it will be equal to stress upon strain and that will be equal to young's modulus stress equal to young's modulus into so this is the constant of proportionality it represents the slope of stress strain curve right okay very good now hooks law hooks law is valid now in civil engineering civil engineering in strength of materials basically in strength of materials everywhere we assume that hooks law is valid everywhere hooks law is valid that we assume okay even if it is mentioned or even it if it is not mentioned if if this is not mentioned that hooks law is valid we automatically assume that hooks law is valid okay so we take material within elastic limit okay but for hooks law to be valid there are some more assumptions okay there are some other assumptions let us say let us see what are the assumptions in assumption assumptions of hooks law first assumption is material is elastic second assumption material is homogeneous third assumption is material is isotropic isotropic so if anywhere it is mentioned that material is isotropic homogeneous and elastic now you know all of these things what is the meaning of elastic what is the meaning of homogeneous what is the meaning of isotropic so if material is isotropic homogeneous and elastic if these three things are given okay then it automatically means that hooks law is valid automatically it will mean that hooks law is okay so many places you will see that it will be mentioned that assumption is that material is isotropic homogeneous and elastic suppose in bending theory suppose in torsion theory okay Th there these three things will be given material is isotropic homogeneous and elastic so what they are trying to say is automatically hooks law is valid that they are trying to say okay so this is the hooks law very simple law nothing uh, very dangerous or something like that okay very very easy and simple law now let us see elastic constants what are elastic constants okay so first elastic constants first first elastic constant is young's modulus or we also call it as modulus of elasticity so young's modulus simply represents ratio of normal stress to normal strain okay ratio of normal stress to normal 
or linear strain okay they are also called as linear strain linear okay so young's modulus if we write mathematically it will be what normal stress normal stress upon Young's modulus will be equal to normal stress upon normal strain. What will be the unit of Young's modulus? Unit of Young's modulus will be same as that of stress. Okay, same as that of stress. Why? Because strain does not have any unit. Okay, so Young's modulus will be having same units as that of stress. Okay, clear, very easy. So if I apply load on any material. this longitudinal direction what will happen there will be some stresses also because of this load and some strains also so that stress divided by strain will be equal to young's modulus okay let's move on to the next one shear modulus or modulus of rigidity okay so this will be corresponding to shear okay so if i apply any force on this material like this okay it will be producing shear force and because of the shear force there will be shear strain in the material So material will be deformed like this. Okay, there will be shear strain in the material. So this force that we have applied is shear force that will be generating shear stress in the material. So ratio of shear stress to shear strain will be called as shear modulus. Okay, so write down. It is the ratio of. It is the ratio of shear stress to shear strain. Shear stress to Shear strain. Okay, so if I want to represent mathematically shear modulus, so shear modulus will be equal to shear stress divided by shear strain. Shear strain. Shear modulus will be equal to shear stress tau divided by shear strain gamma. Gamma, or we also represent it at as phi. Okay, because it represents this angle. Okay. angle is generally represented by gamma theta phi like that okay so shear strain we represent by gamma or phi right so this is the shear modulus let us represent here gamma only so again what is the unit of shear modulus unit same as tau same as tau what is the unit of tau it is also stress only okay so newton per mm square or something like that so same as stress same as unit of stress right so this is shear modulus let's move on to the bulk modulus see all these constants are modulus 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 young's modulus shear modulus bulk modulus what does this modulus is when wherever this modulus is coming that means you can think of it as stress upon strain but the type of stress and type of strain will change but stress upon strain will be constant okay so in the young's modulus it was normal stress upon normal strain but it was ratio of stress stress and strain okay in shear modulus the ratio was shear stress upon shear strain so type of stress changed but stress upon strain is constant okay stress upon strain is there okay so when modulus is coming it will be stress upon strain so bulk modulus also it will be ratio of stress to strain but the type of stress and type of strain will change okay now what do what do we mean by bulk bulk means okay if i consider the bulk of this material that means i am saying the volume of this material. okay so if i am talking about bulk modulus bulk modulus represents the bulk modulus represents the volume okay so if i am having this cube let us say if i am having this cube okay so in this cube in this cube let us say on this cube i have applied forces or stresses like that i am applying uniform all round force okay uniform all round force all round pressure is uniform this is called as hydrostatic stress condition from all the direction same amount of pressure is applied same amount of forces are applied same amount of stresses are generated okay or same amount of pressure is applied from all the side okay from everywhere okay same amount of pressure from everywhere so what it will result in it will result in shrinking of volume volume will be changed okay so that volume will be changed so bulk modulus will be equal to what bulk modulus is volumetric strain okay 
so in type of strain type of strain will be volumetric strain but pressure or stress it will all round pressure okay all round pressure so all round pressure is causing the volumetric strain of this material okay so stress upon strain which type of stress all round stress which type of strain volumetric strain clear okay so let us write down bulk modulus so it is the ratio of it is the ratio of all round pressure all round pressure or strain all all round pressure stress to the volumetric strain to the volumetric okay so that means bulk modulus we can refer as at all round pressure let us say acting is p p divided by volumetric strain or we can represent it by p by delta v by so this will be the bulk mod bulk mod capital k right so bulk modulus is this so all the modulus we have discussed there is one more elastic constant there is one more elastic constant that we call it as poisson's ratio okay poisson's ratio now poisson's ratio is in the name modulus is not coming so it is not the ratio of stress upon strain it is something else okay so next elastic constant is poisson's ratio so what does this poisson's ratio represent think not think just see observe closely what i am discussing if i am having this material and i have applied this force let us say p force i have applied and because of this p force what is happening because of this p force there is elongation in the length wise direction in the length wise direction this material is elongating when it is elongating along the length the diameter is reducing there is reduction in the diameter or let us say lateral dimension okay so there is one ratio poisson's ratio that relates this lateral lateral strain to this longitudinal strain okay so when i have applied this type of force there is strain in all the directions okay in longitudinal direction also there is strain in transverse directions both the transverse direction there is strain okay so it will relate these two right so we can write down poisson's ratio it is the ratio of lateral strain lateral strain longitudinal strain lateral strain to longitudinal strain okay so we can write poisson's ratio mu as negative of lateral strain negative of lateral strain to longitudinal what will be the unit it will be unitless poisson's ratio will will not have any unit okay so why this minus sign is coming here minus sign is coming because if longitudinal strain is positive lateral strain will be negative okay if longitudinal strain is positive then lateral strain will be negative okay so minus sign is representing the opposite nature okay clear or we can write it like this in mod we can write okay lateral strain upon longitudinal strain lateral strain divided by longitudinal okay this will be the poisson's right okay so poisson's ratio lateral strain upon longitudinal strain if i am applying force in this direction i have calculated force in uh, i have calculated strain in this direction okay while applying force there will be some stresses generated and by relating it with young's modulus i can calculate the strain also stress and strain will are related with young's modulus so i have calculated strain in this direction but in this direction also there is some strain how to calculate that so longitudinal strain i will be i'll be knowing poisson's ratio i'll be knowing and from that i can calculate the lateral strain okay so i have applied force in this direction i have applied force in this direction in this direction i can calculate stress stress will be equal to p by a definitely okay then i can calculate strain strain will be equal to stress upon young's modulus so this strain is longitudinal strain longitudinal strain also i want to know lateral strain okay so lateral strain will be equal to 
lateral strain will be equal to minus of mu into longitudinal strain. Okay, from here I can calculate lateral strain, right? So Poisson's ratio is relating lateral strain and longitudinal strain, right? Okay, so these are the four elastic constants. Now, in some examinations, you will be asked what is the value of Poisson's ratio, okay, or range of Poisson's ratio. So for engineering materials, the value of Poisson's ratio lies between 0 0.0 and 0 0.5. That means this is the range of Poisson's ratio for engineering materials, okay. For research material, this range is varying, okay, uh, is more wide, okay. But for engineering materials, it lies between 0 0.0 and 0 0.5. So for exam purpose, you have to remember this only, right. Okay, now Poisson's ratio for different materials will be different, okay. So for cork, okay, in some examinations, these values are asked, okay. So you can remember these values. Cork, for cork, Poisson's ratio is almost equal to 0, okay. It touches 0. For glass, it will be 0 0.012, 0 0.0. For concrete, it will be 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0.1 to 0.2. For metals, it will be 0 0.25 to 0 0.42, 0 0.25 to 0.42. For cast iron, it will be 0 0.2 to 0.3. For steel, it will be 0 0.25 to 0.33. Sometimes it is written 0 0.272, 0 0.3, okay, in uh, different books uh, the value is different, but uh, this is most general, okay. Even if options come and this exact limit is not there, but it will be the closest, you will be able to identify from the options, okay. So remember this, you can remember it like this also, 1 by 4 to 1 by 3, okay. It will be easy to remember 0 0.25 to 0 0.33, 1 by 4 to 1 by 3, like this, okay. Aluminium, it will be 0.33, and 33. For perfectly plastic material, it will be 0 0.5. Perfectly plastic material, for example, perfectly plastic rubber. Okay. Perfectly plastic rubber. The value will be 0 0.5. Okay. So, uh, this was it. So, in the today's class, we have discussed Hooke's law. We have discussed types of materials. We have discussed the elastic constants. Okay. Okay. B before you go, one more thing. Let us discuss relationship between elastic constant. That is also very important. Okay. So, next, fifth, let us discuss relationships. Relationships between elastic constant. Relationships between elastic constant. See, based on this, so many questions are asked in so many different examinations. This is very, very, very important. Okay. You cannot skip this. Okay, you have to learn this. There are four relationships and these relationships are also not very difficult. Okay, they, There are four relationships between the elastic constants. Remember them. Very, very, very important. Highly important. Highly important. Okay, you have five star. Five star. You have to remember this. Okay. So, first relationship E is equal to 2G 1 plus mu. Second relationship E is equal to 3K 1 minus 2 mu. Sometimes these are directly asked as formula. Sometimes they are, um, you know, simple values are given and you have to calculate. Suppose mu is given, k is given, calculate e. e is given, mu is given, calculate k. Okay. So these types of relationships, based on them, very simple questions are asked. You can easily calculate. Okay. Then third is e is equal to 9kg upon 3k plus g. And then last relationship is mu is equal to 6k plus 2g upon 3k minus 2g. Okay. So, these are the four relationships between elastic constants. Okay. So, any two elastic constants are given. Remaining two we can find out. Okay. So, if someone asked what is the number of independent elastic constants for linear isotropic homogeneous number of Number of independent elastic constants for linear isotropic homogeneous material. That means the material that follows Hooke's law. So, the material that follows Hooke's law, we are having four elastic constants, but independent elastic constants are only two. So, number of independent elastic constants is two, total number of elastic constants is four. Okay, what are the four? E, K, mu. These are the total number of four elastic constants, independent are two, because any two are given, 
you will be able to easily find, find out the other two okay using these relationship so this was all for today's class i hope you enjoyed the session let's meet up in the next class bye bye take care